Oh, let's open this. In Suffolk. Oh, can you see me there with my yeah. skirt? Auntie Mary with her trousers there. Her shorts, red shorts. Of course, she's not changed, has she? We're taking my grandfather, Granan, who you can just see behind. We're taking his dog, Beauty, for a walk down by the mere. Gosh, she looks like Uncle John. And you could hire boats out there, so we were allowed to go. Oh, that's Auntie Libby and Gaggy, who was my grandmother, step-grandmother, I suppose, but grandmother, really. We were allowed to go out rowing on our own there, or I was. had some small rowing boats as well and I was allowed to take the small one out on my own. It wasn't very deep. Auntie Mary with her little boat there. So it, it's Thorpe Ness, the mere in, in um, Suffolk. And had lots of little islands that you could moor up and, and go and climb out onto the island. Quite an interesting village because it, it was built as a little bit like um, Port Merion, same sort of thing, but a fantasy, a fantasy village really. Granny and Auntie Mary. Granny would be about forty-two then, I would think. Down, down. Yeah. Well, where are we there? Ooh, Auntie Mary. Picnic on the beach. My grandmother Gaggy in the background. I can't remember exactly where that is because Thorpe Ness didn't didn't have a proper beach. So it'll be somewhere up towards size well I suspect. Going for a walk with Granan. Yeah. Dad had been given the cine camera when he um, when we left Derbyshire and we got to, to Lancashire, and he's leaving present with the cine camera and um, projector and a screen. looks actually more like Aldborough with the boats so um, I may be wrong there. It's certainly in that area. Ooh, ice cream. Grandman. He always wore a white linen jacket in this summer with cavalry twills and a Paris tweed in the winter.
Well, it would be... I'm trying to think when we left Derbyshire. It's between Thorpness and Aldra. Massive heath fire it was. It's a very, very hot, dry summer. They didn't have very <coughs> sophisticated implements to, to get to beat the fire out, did they? It, it raged for about, I don't know, best part of 24 hours. You'd think you'd, you'd got rid of it and it just blew up again. All that heat doesn't go to... Mind you, once it's burnt off like that, it, it, it comes back much more lush, but of course lots of little animals were lost as well. I don't see my father doing a lot of helping, he's more interested in photographing it, mm -hmm. filming it. <laughs> All the cars, the old cars, and then. So you could probably date it from the cars, couldn't you? It wasn't in the 60s, it, it was certainly before we lived in Manchester. We yeah. never went again. I would have thought it had been round about 59 or 60, but I mean, it'd be easy enough to check. We used to go to the same, or rent the same little, I suppose they, they were initially, originally, they were huts built for American service families. And then um, once the Americans had left that area, they used to rent them out as holiday places, right opposite the windmill. Mm -hmm. Old fashioned fire engine. So this is very rad. Yeah. <laughs> Sprung a leak to that one. Yeah. Somebody washing his hands there. Don't know who. See, did you notice the bells instead of the sirens on top? Off the top of the fire engine. Oh, yeah. See, we'd have been staying about no more than two miles from there, so I would have seen all the smoke. Look at the devastation. I've still got the latter Sony camera that he had. I would think that is possibly Alton Broad. Because Ronnie was born in Lower Stoft. So they'd obviously, we'd obviously gone there to sort of mooch around. And Grandma lived in Lower Stoft, obviously, when she was born. Hmm. Me, Auntie Maming, and Auntie Libby, yeah. Oh, granny look young. Mm -hmm. 
It was quite a stony beach actually, it was quite uncomfortable once you got a bit nearer the sea. There are lots of stones, yeah. Oops, there comes Beauty. We used to take our Siamese cat on holiday with us as well. And whether, she, whether she appears in the in any of the did, did you have it on the Yeah. She was called Tino. She was a nasty little piece of work. <laughs> See, my great-grandfather, as far as I know, <coughs> was a shipbuilder in uh, the Lower Stoft area. What's his name? Mm. I don't know. Do you know, I don't know. I don't really know. Granny's father, who, whom I called, always called Granan, he, um, he sort of left the family business and ended up in um he went to oxford doing what i don't know he was president of the debating society one year i don't actually know what he did he went on into the civil service eventually this doesn't change does it punch and judy Although uh, these days, Punch would be uh, he'd be arrested. No, oh, you're joking. You want to see our Punch and Judy on the beach here? He tells everybody Queen Victoria liked her good old German sausage. But, uh, That's Uncle Bill Cowland, who was um, reading his newspaper in the wind. Yeah, that's the lady with the pink hat. Yeah. Is Auntie Connie? Colin in front of her, that's Uncle Colin, and the other woman is Auntie Philly, who was Uncle Bill Cowland's wife. Um, Philly was my grandmother's sister, that was Auntie Con, bless her heart, with a Mayflower, the car was called, wasn't it? Uh, is that Granny? Yeah. Yeah, you see, this is... Looks like a year further on at least, Sun Smell looks just a little bit bigger, doesn't she? I mean nowadays you wouldn't see men on the beach in suits and a tie, would you? It's very windy. Now fairly shortly after this, Auntie Philly had a stroke. <clears throat> she was in a coma for about 10, 12 years or something. Did she wake up? No. Yeah, she did eventually die and Uncle Bill married again. Um, fairly quickly. Is that Uncle Bill? <laughs> Uncle Bill Cowland, yes. I mean, we were very fond of him. He was a nice man. They never had any children of their own. Yeah, Chloe looks just like Auntie Mary. Not very good photography, is it? That one, Uncle Bill again. No, I think it's the film. Whee! Oh. 
instant holidays, eh? Oh, that's the car that we had. The Morris Minor, the Traveller. Look at that teapot. <laughs> yeah. I think this must be back at Thought Ness again. I was petrified of those swans. And we went late that year actually because I developed glandular fever. Hmm. And we went a day late than we'd normally have gone. Nasty hissing things. They are. I mean, as a, as a little girl, I was petrified of my own shadow. It really was. Mm. Who's in the boat with you there? Onto Libby. Just just moved up to Wigan then. So I'd have been about nine. So yeah, that's just opposite the cottage where we stayed. The house in the clouds, which is a it's a water tank that was clad, and then it's now been converted to a holiday cottage because obviously they don't need water tanks water. anymore; just main water. Not very well up. Indeed. in the same boat again, squeak. It's all still there, all these boats are still there. And the I same don't... ones even, yeah. Yeah, well, I guess when they built them, they built them to last, didn't they? Well, they did and, and people sort of, and they were maintained. There you go, you got the swing of it. Oh gosh. It was a close, it was a close one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, the thought of Ness itself is very, very little changed. Not know who Granny is talking to there. I used to like it when I was when I went out with Dad, just me and Dad. Those are the little cottages we stayed in. There she is, there's Tino. She travelled the whole way down to Suffolk. She was very much like my Cleo, actually. Uh, draped around my father's neck on his shoulders. Uncle Colin. Auntie Connie again. Auntie Con, yes. She was a dear, she really was lovely.
That I think is Orford. That's an English Heritage Run castle now. That was Uncle Bill Cowland. So he was my, well, he was no relation, but his wife was a great aunt, I suppose. I don't know where that is, but that's over, probably over towards Orford. There's still a lot of windmills over in that area. Most of them having been restored. Scales like mine, House in the Clouds. There we go. That isn't Thorpe Nesson. <laughs> no, do you think this is Grandad's Motorcycle Club? Mm. They had two sort of arms, one of which just sort of rode sedately around on road time trials, really, or just out for a long ride, and then the mad ones that did this. Which motorbike club was it? Uh, vintage motorcycle club. Although in this time they these weren't vintage, were they really? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. They weren't veteran, but they were vintage. See what's been done. Uh, he's painting the tank of one of the motorbikes. Now, Auntie Libby would then usually paint on the, you know, the Norton or whatever it was, or Bellasetti or whatever particular one it was. That I think is at Buxton. It's uh, raining for sure. It always did. The poor old wives having to stand and watch. I suppose we must have taken them down on a trailer. Yeah, or let the sun's come out. Does it look like a flat tank Norton there? What's that one? Is that a BSA? Yes, it looks like it, yeah. Maybe I can share yeah. this footage with the Grandad's Motorcycle Club. Mm. Well, his name's still around because they're still presenting the yeah. memorial trophy. He used to have to stop court for meetings just south on the um, on the A6, just south south of the town centre.
she shows you what there wasn't very much to do on a Sunday afternoon in those days, doesn't it? <laughs> Because he used to race motorbikes in his uh, schoolboy days, Grandad did. Public schools, they did that sort of thing, scrambling. And he got, he got several trophies from then. I suppose we must have taken the motorbike down on the, on the trailer behind the car. That's where we lived in Presswich, Presswich Park Road South. Where Granny and Grandad and the three of us lived. With my granny as well. Bill Foster Owls, who is a Methodist minister. That was Auntie Libby's boyfriend there, Anthony. That's his, his aunt. This must have been the occasion of their daughter's wedding. I think the Owls' daughter's wedding. Typical Victorian semis, lovely house actually. Nothing to do with us, doggy. yellow white and this must have been Jeff took this As we came down here for a couple of holidays to stay with, that's Rob, Robin, mm. is it? To stay with Mary and Tag. And that's the seafront, a ride. And that's your cousin, um, Andrew. Mary and Ted's eldest son, Andrew. They've got two, and that's Philip, the younger one. Robin. Me, and Ted. Robin. Uh, 
how we managed to get Robin on a horse, I can't even start to imagine because he used to be so scared of things like that. Again, this is Freshwater Bay. That stormy me down. Mm. It was a Sunday morning and by the afternoon it was absolutely gorgeous. Back on the south coast of the island there? I don't know. Back in Rye. Uh, is that right? Sundown. That's me and Mary in the background. She was nice, Mary was. That must be uh, Yaveland and Sundown, I think. And that's Newport, Isle of Wight. Because they lived in the um, prison houses. Take was deputy governor. Oh, that's you. Yeah. And Mary. We cut that grass, Jeff and I did, with a pair of blooming scissors because they oh. hadn't got a lawn. Clay fighting up in the bedroom. A house is just on the corner of Forest Road as you're leaving Newport and going on the Yarmouth Road. Oop, up it goes. Oh, yeah. That God's help. You know it. Yes.
Not looking very happy now. Right? No. <laughs> oh, look, there's me. Oh, that's you. Look at you then. Camping in Cornwall. You again? The campsite. Oh, you got in your eyes. Look at you. Oh. God, that was a miserable holiday. It started to, to rain. Oh, it's no fun when you're camping if it's raining, is it? No. And the, uh, what was it called? The Hillman. Mm. I mean, the tent was pretty good. Yeah, it's just the weather. That's just out of, just north of Tintagel in Cornwall. Near Elephant Bay. Mm. I mean, it was parts of the holiday were quite nice. What a good little boy that wasn't. Mm -hmm. Where do you think this is? Heaton, that's probably it's Heaton Park.
we used to go there every every Sunday. No, North Manchester Prestwich. We'd often go for a walk there. We went one Sunday with you got two new shoes on and came back with one new shoe on. Mm. Easter in the front room in, in um, Gardner Road. So you like chocolate even then, Ningi? I know. Um, so I must have been about six months old. Robin must have been about five then. The cat was enjoying some chocolate there. A cat? Yeah, a black and white cat. Yeah, I vaguely remember it. Granny took it off me. Give me chocolate. Oh, no, I'll tell you who it was. It was Dilly, Dad's cat Dilly. Yeah, he he picked it up in Scotland when he was wrapping up there because it was a strain, brought it back home and, and gave it to Grandma. Or when he moved out mm. to be with me, though Grandma didn't know. Yes, Dad got... Oh, Look at poor Robin. Poor Robin. 